Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. We are blessed with an absolutely stunning day. We've got very large tides. We're all out today, aren't we? What are yeah. we doing, James? Foraging for lobsters. We're out foraging along a rocky shore on large spring tides looking for crabs and lobsters and pretty much anything else we can find. We're, we're right down at low tide line now. The tide's going to be going out for about another hour and a half. We're going to follow it all the way down and look around in all these bits of rock poles. James has got his wetsuit on. I've got me. Waders. Me waders on. I'm completely inappropriate. <laughs> Hannah is going to supervise. Wrong. Yeah, what we're doing is... What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking down around areas like this in this cave. That's why James has got this torch and this hook. Now immediately looking around in these poles, this is this is the perfect time of year to come down and start foraging on the shore. Springtime is when all the seaweeds are starting to come in through fresh. They haven't taken over yet. You can still walk about, it's not too slippy, but all this fresh growth. Here's your sea lettuce. There's your Irish moss that's actually got. Those are eggs from, it looks like, a stingwinkle. Mixed in here you've got some flat fernweed, some pink corals. That there is called bunny ears. If you can see, right on the ends of them, they're segmented so it looks like bunny's ears. That's thongweed just coming through. You've got some of your kelps. A serrated rack, you can tell because the edges of them are serrated. We've got some bladder racks on there. And further up you've got your pom-pom weed and then right on the top there's more of that bunny ears right on the top we've got our pepper dulse this is your pepper dulse in one in one five meter square you've probably got 20 different types of seaweed and all you have to do is just start turning over rocks and then, oh there's a rockling see it there look There's a furrowed crab. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little baby variegated scallop, like a Pac Man. There's a little brittle star. Do you know what these are, James? All these yeah. up. Oh, I forgot the name. Something. Starts worm. with a K, kicking K. Keel worms. Keel worms. Keel worms. Oh. Yep, oh, he's on his way. Right, so let's get at it. Yeah. You try and stay out the water. I'll you try, try not to go over your wellies. <laughs> and you try not let's go. Oh, oh look, there's a, an anemone in me. Oh. There's a few little brown edible crabs. There's another one there, look. There you go. And there is a little tiny cushion star. Them back up. Yeah, what we're looking for is little caves like this. Dad. Just one second. Can we see anything up there? No, not in that one. But yeah, that's what we're looking for. These little caves is where the crabs and the lobsters hide. Lobsters generally what you'll find the telltale sign what you'll see first is two red antennas because they'll back themselves in so their claws are facing out and the two antennas will wave them around I tell you what the water quality today is fantastic yeah, which, that's something that we're blessed with down here and it's, it's due to the rock it's due to the, the topography because it's all granite even after we've had a bit of a stir, I mean, the last couple of weeks have been really rough. As soon as you get a bit of calm weather, of course all the particles are really heavy because they're granite, they just drop straight out. Look, what's this here? A big spiny starfish. looking at anywhere in here 
No. No. There's a velvet swimming crab at the back of that hole. Oh, and another one. At the back of that hole. What were you guys doing down here? Okay, well I'll have a look. Oh, there's another. Um, snake clocks and emony. Oh, brilliant. I'll come up and have a look. Can you show me where it is? In here. Okay. Edible crab. Oh yeah. Well spotted right down at the bottom of there. Not a keeper size. But no, he's a bit too small, so I'm not going to bother trying to trying to hook him out of there. But they're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. What Hannah's talking about there is when they pair up males and females, a female will generally hide right at the back of the hole and a male will get like towards the front of the hole and protect her. He's kind of like wedged in. Yeah. There's a big hole there, I can't see. No. There's another really big starfish. Eating little dog whelk. What have we got in here? Another little brown edible crab. Yeah, looking for areas like this, you're looking for like two red antennas poking out. I'm sure, there's a lobster in there. This kelp is lovely when it's all fresh grown. They used to harvest it, they used to collect it and extract iodine from it back back in the day. This is the area where you want to be. Normally this isn't uncovered, you can smell it, you can smell the kelp and the seaweed. I love it. There's one of those snake locks and emonies and another. And there's another down here. If you get a chance to come foraging on a night like this, come even to come in rock and rolling, bring a UV light with you. Because if you shine a UV light on these on a night, they grow back like the brightest, brightest neon green. In fact, I'll put I'll put a little clip in here now showing you what they look like on a night with a UV light. That is harpoon weed. And there are some more snake locks, but a brown type. Them gullies are all down here for the same thing that we are. Looking for a bit of scavenge. Found one. Just in here. Now it's not a monster. But there is a lobster in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my hook out. James, can I borrow that hook, please? Sure, and I want to see if I can't finagle it out. <sighs> Should have put the camera down. <laughs> Next time, I think I'll put the camera down, get the lobster on, and I'll show you it. This little area here. That's a really big anemone there. Uh, this little area here is exactly what we're looking for. 
and I've just I've just startled a little lobster. Just gonna that's why all, all the all the water's all stirred up in there. It's just bolted right down in this corner here. Again, it wasn't a very big one, it wouldn't have been big enough to keep. And at the moment I can't even see where it is because of all the dirty water. So I'll I'll mark this in my mind and I'll come back and have a look at this in about half an hour when the water's settled. So yeah, so far, just two little tiny ones. Right, found one. But it's not gonna be an easy one. <laughs> just found just found this little hole in here, and I was just looking at the back of it. And bearing in mind it goes back about probably about four foot and all I did was I just snuck the hook right to the back and just put down into the water and obviously the claws come out to try and get so I know there's a lobster in there I've just got to work to get it out now try and show you what I meant there see it Go to work. You're going to get it out or am I going to get it out? You get it out. Because <laughs> you found it. Yeah. The trick is, hopefully, is that you just put the hook to the back of the hole like that. Tempt it and turn it round and then pull it. Because that's a deep hole and it goes off at a bit of an angle, it's going to be quite difficult to get out. So yeah, I'm going to put the camera down and I'll come back to you when I've got it out. Hopefully it's big enough. <sighs> Come on. Gently does it. I know you went, <laughs> I know it fits, because it went in there. Oh. You do sometimes get a situation where a lobster will go into a hole to change, to, to shed its shell, and it gets stuck. But this one. Wow. Got you. Got your tricky bugger. Oh, right. Crikey. It's a female. Because it has no dots. Yep, yeah, it has no balls. No V notches. Yeah. It is well above minimum length. That's more like 95 mil. <laughs> I know you're getting excited. You're doing a really good job filming, James. Well done. Okay. But yeah, there's your lobster. Also, if you look at that antenna, it's rolled up. Yeah, it is. You know, you know why that's rolled up? Why it's got a rolled up antenna? No. Because at some point in time, it's lost that antenna, and it's growing back, and that's how they grow back. Oh. So yeah. So how large does the Brilliant. roll get? And well done, cameraman. Yep. <laughs> but your arm, all scoured up. Oh. That's all my arms are all. Put her in a bigger pole, see if we can do it. There, look. See, they walk forwards because their claws are forwards to, to defend any danger. And then when they're, when they're evading something, they usually clap that tail and swim backwards. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm made up with that. <laughs> After losing them two little ones in them holes, I'm, I'm made up that I found that. There is a little male brown edible crab. I've just got out of that hole there. Now he's too small, and I was, his claws are a little bit pale on the ends, that shows me he's just peeled. So he is a little tiny bit soft actually. Yeah, minimum landing size for these is about that long. From where my finger is to where my thumb is. So we'll slip him back. But another beautiful thing to see there. In fact, I'm gonna get my other camera out for that. Whoa. Now look, that is a squat lobster. 
crabs just made his way back up there. Yeah, they're beautiful then. We're almost at low tide now. Hannah's gone back up to go and get herself a cup of coffee. <laughs> a cup of coffee at the cafe on the beach. And me and James are just following this last little bit down, but there are... This is what we're looking for, like, see? There's a little variegated scallop. And there's a little brown edible. What's that, best boy? Found a crab? Right, I'll go over and have a look. Yeah, all I'm doing is I'm just following these little gullies like this. Just along the edges. Because it's... There's another anemone. Yeah, what you're looking for is little overhangs or little holes in the gullies. We've got up the back of there. Oh. Another big starfish. Just this little waterproof diving torch is perfect for this. Right, stay there, I'm coming. Yeah, another little brown crab at the back of that hole. Well spotted, James. It's getting a little bit chilly now, aren't you? Mm. Water is cold. It looks nice, but it's cold, isn't it? Uh -huh. Let's have a quick look in these rock pools. Oh, that was a big fish. I think that was a rockling. Oh. I think he's under this one now. Oh, no, there he is. There's one under my foot because I can feel him waggling. And the other one's underneath the bucket, I think. Dad, oh, you see its tail flapping, look. Yep, 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 yep. He's a good escape artist. Yeah, he was a rockling. Oh. They are fast, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I think next time we'll have to bring your net down. Yeah. Because we both forgot it. Yeah, we did. Loads of prawns. Yeah. Well, there's was, another little squat lobster, look. When Mum was still here, she was trying to catch her a big one. She was trying to catch the prawns with her hands, was she? Yeah. She was not successful. Not <laughs> she wasn't successful. Yeah. Right, let's have a look under this rock. Oh, same again. Little furrowed crabs and prawns. Oh, actually, huh? something else. Now you know what that is, don't you? Pipeworm. That is pipefish. Pipe fish. And can you see that on its belly? And it's got eggs. So you know that this one's a male? Yeah, because the, yeah, the same as the seahorses, the males carry the eggs. They are, aren't they? They're related to seahorses. Yeah. So the males carry the eggs. They've got the seahorses now. Yeah. So there you are. And there's the eggs underneath. Well, you got it just looks like a little piece of seaweed, doesn't it? Let's have a look, James, see what we can find. Oh, some more beautiful brittle stars. You just have to be really gentle with them, don't you? Yeah. Why? Why do you have to be really gentle? Because they're delicate. Because they're very brittle. That's why they're called brittle stars. You remember what these are now, don't you? Yep, keel worms. Keel worms. There's actually some of the worms sticking out. Where are you going? Little furrowed crab. More brittle stars. Mm. Oh wow, he's quite a red one isn't he? Got big arms on him. Yeah, 
think he's been skipping leg day at the gym though. Yeah. Did you just fart then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another brittle star on the, on the move. Another lovely anemone. Now these are harpoon weed. You see the little white ones on them have got little barbs on like a harpoon. Right, tide's flooding back in now. We're going to go back up. We've got some cooking to do. We've got some cooking to do. This on top of here is an invasive seaweed. It's called Devil's Tongue Weed. This flat one here has got to be a good one. Surely. Oh yeah. There was a fish of some description. There is an olive squat lobster. Variegated scallop shell. Little furrowed crab. I don't know where that little fish went to. It's quite fast though. Uh, yeah. Tell you what, we might have a look and see if we can't can't tempt that guy out of there. It's quite a large velvet swimming crab. You coming out, lad? There you go, see? That's how you do it. Oh, oh, oh where are you going? Velvet swimming crab. It's called a velvet swimming crab because the texture is velvet and those swimming legs help it to swim. Look. Let's go. Right. Just going to tell everyone the tides, I mean, the tides are running really fast now. The tides between high tide and low tide is usually around about six and a half hours. Now between a neap and a spring, a neap is a small tide and a spring is a big tide. A neap tide might only have three meters of movement in that six and a half hours. So it'll go between like four meters and one meters. Whereas a spring tide might have six meters. So it might be like a 5.8 to a negative 0.2. So that more, more water needs to move in that same six and a half hours. So if you're coming down on, on the, the scar or the beach or anything like that, on these big spring tides, you need to be aware that when the tide starts coming in, it's going to come in fast. I mean, it's already flooding into all these gullies that we've been in. It is, it's rising. You can almost just watch it rise up how quickly it's coming in. So yeah, we're going to make tracks. You see what them crows are doing there? They are really smart animals, oh, smart birds. They've been watching, they've obviously watched either seagulls or humans come and do that. They're um, turning the seaweed over and catching like the little bugs that are underneath. I saw one of them fighting with a crab earlier on. I tell you what, he had a battle on his ass. Oh, wings. Yeah, on his wings. Well, taking advantage of an absolutely beautiful afternoon. James and I have brought one of our rocket stoves. This is a cross between a Swedish torch and a rocket stove. I have a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to make this. But basically, air goes in there 
and feeds a little fire in there and all I'm doing is I'm just feeding it with little tiny sticks just until it builds up and then takes. Here is our wonderful lobster from the shore. It fits just perfectly inside of this pan. I've covered this in loads of videos before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boil this lobster. I'm going to dispatch it and then we're going to boil it. All I'm going to use is I'm going to use clean seawater. I'll show you what I mean by that when I collect it. If you can't, if you don't have access to clean seawater, just use fresh water but add salt to it. It wants to be as salty as the sea that you took it from. What we're going to do is we're going to put the pan on the stove, heat the water up until it's properly, like fully boiling, rolling boil and then you put the lobster in. The lobster, because it's cold, will lower the temperature of the water and as it will start to cook up again, as soon as it gets to a rolling boil again, two more minutes after that and it's done. So rolling boil, lobster in, back up to the rolling boil, two more minutes and it's ready to walk off. So anybody who's watched our videos before will, will know that verbatim. But yeah, in case you haven't, there you go. It also works for crabs. It works for any size of crab or lobster because the larger the crab or lobster, the longer the water takes to come back up to the rolling boil, so it cooks for longer. Yeah, sat patiently in there, aren't you? Yeah, we've got them. It's starting to just get going inside of there. It's a, a really efficient use of, of the wood that you've got. Like one of these stoves. This is a soft wood, this will burn quite quick, but this will do the full cook. And it, there's, there's, there's other benefits to it as well, but like a beech or like a silver birch or something like a hardwood will burn for hours and hours and they give off loads and loads of heat. We're going to go down to the water now. Mm -hmm. Right. That is clean. Very, very clean. That's how much we need. Yeah. We're blessed with, with very, very clean seawater down here. Like I say, if you haven't got access to it, fresh water will do, but you need to add salt to it. Right, this, that is a proper rolling boil now. See what I mean? A proper bubbly rolling boil. Dispatch the lobster and get it in the pan. By positioning this stove, there is a tiny, tiny bit of a breeze. I mean, you can just see it rippling the water there. By positioning the stove so the wind's blowing, it's constantly feeding this fire. That has been on, that has been on there for maybe two minutes. And it's already back up to a rolling boil look. Back up to a rolling boil, two more minutes and she's ready to come off. Right, start getting the table set. stoves another beauty of these stoves is look there's absolutely no transfer of heat through that you can pick that up no bother at all and the fire is all still going inside of there so that we're not smoked out I'm gonna move it over there now I did I did forget <laughs> I did forget the butter dish usually I get like a little dish and put some butter in it and heat it up so instead what we're going to do is we're going to try and melt some in the lid of this oh it actually is pretty good yeah i said it would oh no oh. a little bit of drizzle's coming that won't bother us won't bother me yeah what do you want do you want the cruncher claw or the Cut a claw. Oh, they both taste the same. What would you like? I'll take this one. Okay. You want the big one? 
There you go. Be careful though, because it's hot. It's cold, mate. It's, it's still going to be hot no matter where you pick it up from. No, hold it in one hand. And it's just a light tap, look. See? And with a little bit of melted butter. <laughs> I'm really struggling. Let me help you. Yeah, really makes one move. Mmm, very good. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. You don't need to smash it, it just needs to be a knock just to crack it. Take the, take the joint off. Take the joint off by bending it backwards. There's me some here. Yeah, no, we're, we're not going to get that in a second. You're doing the claw first. There you go. Like that. <coughs> <coughs> Careful though, because it's going to be hot. Well, at least we've got the cooking done. And we've had a lovely day, haven't we? It's just started to, it's just started to do a bit of spitting now. It's just started to rain. I can't remember. Do you like the tail meat more than the than the uh, body meat? Mm -hmm. or do you like? I do. Mm, okay. All you need to do, look, is this your lobster stick here? All you do is just poke it through like that and then lift it out. Come on. There you go. I'm going to show you a trick about how to get the meat out of the tail because I've seen some people eating these and they, they really mess it up. Parry. <laughs> <laughs> right. All you do is twist it like that, pull the tail out. Now, this gunk here, some people like to eat it, we don't. No. Right, and then all you do is you take take the bottom end and you just twist it like that. It's really side trying to, to hammer it down. Just side to side and the, the box should come off. Yeah. You then put it down on a hard surface, just lay it on its side, and just give it a. You know that crack? Yep. And then you should be able to just peel it open like that. And there you are. Richard, Dad, you want to take it off of this in trench? Cameraman James, well done. We'll try a little bit of that. Oh, she's pretty clean. There we go. All I did was peel it off the back to take the intestine line out and split it straight down the middle. There we go. It is tipping it down now. Let's go and take some shelter over there. <laughs> Typical. Look, it is. <laughs> See steam coming out of his mouth. 
Oh, there's a seal over there, James. Well, we survived the rain showers. You can just, just to see, see a rainbow left over there. And unfortunately, I think we've got more coming. The stove lasted perfectly. You see, What's you could probably nice actually, nice. probably have done two on this stove because it was quite a thick one. Yeah, we're finishing it off with some marshmallows. All the bits of shell are all collected together. We've picked through that. We've eaten all the meat out of there and we're just going to take it further down towards the water and put it under a rock. So any of the little tiny bits that we've left behind, like the internal organs and bits and pieces, the crabs, the gobies, the blennies and all that, they can have a pick through and have a feed too. Just returning all of it back to the ecosystem. That looks like a very good marshmallow there, but just be careful because you might scold yourself. <laughs> What's your idea of a perfect marshmallow? Like I've I've met some people where if it's not black it's not done. Whereas I'm I prefer mine to be like golden brown all the way around. I'll show you. Perfect. There we are. In my opinion, those are pretty darn perfect. So look at yours, James. Cheers. Cheers. Ah. I think you won out with that. You've got half a man. Perfect way to finish a lobster dinner. <laughs> I know I keep harping on about this, but to be able to do this with your stove, look, just pick it up like that. All the heat, there's nothing transferring through there. It's all just inside of there, look. Now, there is a hard, there is a hard part inside of this. There was a couple of knots. So it is, it is burning really well. There, look, see. The beauty about this bean is that I could leave this now to burn out completely or I could put it out in the water and I could put it in an edge and because it's a log it'll just rot down. Whereas what I'm going to do is I'm going to douse it off and I'm going to take it home and then next time I have a bonfire I just have a fire with all the half stoves that I've got left. Right, just roll it around. Roll it about. Get plenty of water in there. Look at that, look, roll it over. There you go. There you go. I'll leave that corner of the wood pile. When it's dried back out, I'll split it and we'll have a bonfire with them. And there we go, it's, it's time to get away because the tide's coming in on us. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed joining us down on the shore, finding that lobster. And for the subsequent cook-up and yep. marshmallows that are pasted all over your face. I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. Bye. Bye.